Every cell in the body needs to absorb proteins, molecules, and ions in their environment in order to survive, function, and communicate with other cells. Some interactions with extracellular molecules can occur while membrane proteins, triggering intracellular processes. Other molecules require absorption into the cell body for this to happen. But how does this take place? Here we will discuss how cells use finely tuned methods to move materials across their membranes. Cell membranes are made up of phospholipid bilayer. This layer forms a tight seal preventing organelles and proteins from escaping and keeps unwanted molecules out. Small pores in the membrane allow only water and gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide to move freely across the membrane from a higher concentrated area to a lower concentrated area. This is referred to as a simple diffusion and requires no energy to be spent by the cell. Osmosis is a diffusion of water molecule across the membrane down its concentration gradient. Dissolved ions needed for charge and pH regulation inside the cell follow a similar mechanism to water. However, charge interaction with the cell membrane prevent simple diffusion from occurring. Protein channels embedded in the membrane allow ion and small charged molecules to enter until a concentration equilibrium occurs. Glucose amino acids require carrier proteins and ions such as potassium and sodium require ion channels to cross the cell membrane. This process is referred to as facilitated diffusion and requires no energy. If you remember, we mentioned that water can diffuse through phospholipid bilayer freely via osmosis. In some cells, such as red blood cells and kidney cells, there is a special type of water channel called aquaporin. Aquaporins are transmembrane proteins that regulate the flow of water into and out of cells. How does body maintain salt and water balance across membranes? When a red blood cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, water will leave the cell and the cell will shrink. In an isotonic environment, the relative concentration of solute and water are equal on both sides of the membrane. There is no net water movement, so there is no change in the size of the cell. When a cell is placed in a hypotonic environment, water will enter the cell and the cell will swell. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, is a universal energy currency of the cell. ATP is used to alter the structure of protein channels to move these molecules across the membrane against the concentration gradient. This is referred to as active transport. Sodium-potassium pump is an example of a primary active transport. pump moves three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell to create a membrane potential. Secondary active transport uses the ion gradient generated by the sodium-potassium pump to drive the movement of a secondary molecule. Sodium glucose transport in the proximal tubule cell is an example of a secondary active transport. Sodium glucose co-transporter uses the energy in a downhill movement of sodium to transport glucose across the membrane against glucose gradient so that the sugar can be transported into the bloodstream. Endocytosis is a type of active transport that moves larger molecules, particles and even cells into the cell. Pinocytosis is a spontaneous and non-specific endocytotic process. We refer to it as a cell drinking. Receptor-mediated endocytosis involves attachment of a specific molecule to receptors on the cell membrane. Macromolecules such as sugars, cholesterol and hormones are taken up by receptor-mediated endocytosis. Phagocytosis is a more specific endocytotic process and it captures and uptakes bacteria and cell debris. Exocytosis is the reverse process of endocytosis. Materials from the cells are transported into the extracellular fluid. 